Well, we had uh, we had an appointment to go see a psychic, and we we got there, and soon we sat down. She looked at me and she said, "You just lost somebody, didn't you?" And she says, "I mean, like really, really recent." And I was a little set back because my grandfather had literally just passed away that morning. And she said, I can't tell the name, but his name starts with a B. My grandpa's name was Byron. Welcome to What the Fuck Just Happened. I'm your host, Liz Enton. If you listen to the intro, you know my story. If not, here's a brief summary. I'm a science skeptic, and when my dad died, I took a shot in the dark and decided to investigate if there was any possible evidence of an afterlife. I assumed that was as realistic as Santa Claus, but I was desperate. However, I was so blown away by what I discovered that I wrote a book and launch this podcast. In this podcast, I will be talking to some fairly normal people about some really weird shit. I speak with everyone from psychic mediums and afterlife researchers to ordinary people who've had some inexplicable experiences. So come, listen, there's no need to draw any final conclusions. Keep an open mind and wonder what the fuck just happened? Hi, everyone. Today I'm talking with such an interesting guest. His name is Kyle Yates. I was on his podcast. So, Kyle, introduce yourself to our guest. Well, I am Kyle Coyote Yates, and I am the owner and host of uh, the Vibes Broadcast Network. I do two shows on there that are uh, Listen to the Vibes and Into the Pit. Oh, they're a little different than What the Fuck, but some overlapping topics. I think both of us seem to have a curiosity in the inexplicable. And that was definitely something that made us first connect. I guess describe what your podcast is about, because I think it's something our listeners would love too. Well, um, I, let me start off uh, from the beginning, because uh, when I got into podcasting, it was strictly paranormal, and that's my show, Into the Pit. Uh, you know, I'm a paranormal investigator, and it just, that wasn't enough for me, so I got into podcasting to get other investigators on and talk to uh, the, those paranormal investigators you see on TV, and uh, I, I ended up meeting an actor his name's adrian paul and when i met adrian I'm like how do you not invite somebody like that on your show but how do you incorporate this guy onto a paranormal show well it it was a little odd but it worked but i said i've, I've got to do something different and i've had some health issues a few other things that uh I wanted to help other people and there's folks out there that need inspiration and there's a lot of negativity podcasting and YouTube and all that. I wanted to do something different. So I started listening to the vibes where I can interview any array of people. I got actors, musicians, life coaches, entrepreneurs, authors, comedians, just all these different people that can, you can tell their story and hopefully inspire somebody else that, you know, they can pursue what they want to do in life. So a podcast sounds very good for curious, open-minded people, which I think are very much our listeners here. Obviously, also being a paranormal investigator is very interesting to our listeners here. How did you get involved in that? Well, first of all, I've had experiences throughout my life. And, you know, quite honestly, I didn't know that that was a thing. I mean, it's been going on for probably over a century, but I, I didn't know it was a thing until I saw Ghost Hunters on TV, and I'm sitting there just, I am I'm so enthralled with this show, I said, you know what, I'm, I am going to join a team, and not only am I going to join a team and be an investigator, but I am going to investigate with those guys one day, 
and I'm going to have my own team. And those dreams did come true. And if you want to know how I got on the team, that's another good story. Yes, I think we do want to know that. <laughs> well, make a long story short, my first wife left me and I was on my own for about 10 years. And I'm, I met my wife online that I have now. And uh, I, I asked her out on a date after, I guess we'd been talking for like two or three months. And anyway, we were all set to go on the date. She messages me the day of and says, look, I'm sorry, I can't go. And I'm bummed out thinking, okay, another one's flaked out on me. I'm ready to give up on this online dating stuff. But she kept texting me all night. And finally, I got up the nerve and I'm like, hey, what are you doing that you can text me, but we couldn't go out on a date? And it, it took her a little while before she answered, but she figured, you know, I might as well know what she does. She goes, well, I'm a paranormal investigator and we're on an emergency case because there's a kid involved and the kid's getting hurt and I had to go. And my next reaction was, well, marry me now. <laughs> but they, they actually had an opening on the team and I tried out and I got on the team. That's such a cute story too. Now you said you'd had interesting experiences. Can you share some of the first ones you ever had and how old you were then? Well, the first one that I had, I think I was around five or six years old. And I was staying over at my grandparents' house. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I sat up in the bed for some reason. And I looked at the, the doorway coming in and here's a, what looked like a suit of armor standing in the door. And I'm just, uh, you know, a little kid. I'm kind of freaked out, throw the covers over my head and I peeked out and it was gone. But that was the first thing that ever happened. The second one which this one's a little bit harder for me to explain away, is that I, I used to collect those little Hot Wheel cars, and I had a shelf that, that I, I kept them on. And I'm, I'm very anal when it comes to like my, my collections. You know, I, everything has to be in a, a certain order. So I had them all facing the same direction. But there was one car that was made out of wood that I had built in my grandpa's shop. And it was facing the same direction as the other cars, but when I'd get up in the morning, it'd be facing the opposite direction. And so I'd get up and I'd turn around. I, I explained it away as I thought my little brother was doing it, but how in the world is he going to climb over me in the middle of the night and not wake me up and move it on my shelf? Because the shelf was literally over the top of my bed. And that kept happening. So that happened multiple times. The same car would keep facing different ways. Mm -hmm. That would happen just about every morning. And I, you know, it eventually stopped, but I couldn't figure out how in the heck is this one car moving on its own. And then later on, I moved out. This is when I was, I had just graduated high school, I moved in with a friend of mine and where he lived was in a pretty historical part of our town. Right down the road is the Sage Center Monument. Then there was the, the Sage Center Battleship. And of course, the Battle of San Jacinto happened right there in the area where his home's at. And in that house, I remember one evening looking out the window and seeing somebody running across the yard. Well, I, I jumped up to go see who the heck could be running across our yard. And they were gone. And if they had hopped the fence, well, they would have went down a large concrete embankment and they would have at least broke some bones anyway, but there was nobody there. And then another night I I went to bed and I woke up with my stereo on. Well, you might say, oh, that could have been a power surge, except it was one of those old stereos that had the big square buttons on it that you had to push in to turn it on. Well, that was on and it was playing and um, I couldn't figure out how in the heck did that happen? <laughs> you know? I'm going to just ask your opinion on this because I know there's a question in paranormal investigation. First of all, with the possible ghosts you were seeing, I know there's a question. Are they hauntings or apparitions? Are they consciousness of someone who's passed or imprints like when you watch a movie? Well, for some instances, I would say that they're 
more than likely imprints. Um, you know, like wood and things in, in homes, they act kind of like a recorder in a way. And they can pick up these imprints of, of certain energy and it will kind of replay itself at some time. But I'm in belief that, you know, we're, we're made of energy. And, you know, the, in science, you can you can transfer energy, but you can't destroy it. So I think once you're, you're dead, then that energy is left over to you know, roam around. If it hadn't got transferred in a certain way, then it's left to roam around. All memories, I mean, I don't know if memories, I mean, that kind of implies in our brains, but all occurrences are stored in light. So if you were to travel faster than the speed of light, which as far as we know, we can't actually do, you would see everything that happened stored in the light rays. When you look at the sun, you're seeing light rays from a little bit in the past. And think about the photos we've been seeing from deep space recently. We're seeing them from, was it millions or billions of years ago? When I think about that, why could memories or, I mean, experiences not imprint and be stored here? There's just still so much we don't understand. But if I could guess, both of those phenomena, information being stored in the light, as well as information and recordings being stored here, I feel like that's phenomena that would tie in with each other in some way. I want to explain what I'm talking about for any of the listeners who don't know. There's a question in parapsychological research of hauntings versus apparitions. Lloyd Arbach, who I talk about a lot here, who's a well-regarded parapsychologist, he's been my guest in episodes 13 and 14, explains the difference really well. Apparitions are often confused with hauntings. The difference is that apparitions are living, intelligent consciousness. Like what we would be if the survival hypothesis is accurate, and we see what people refer to as a ghost of our loved ones. This would be what a medium could communicate with. It's kind of would be more like talking to someone on Zoom. And hauntings are like recordings. More like YouTube. Like seeing a video recording of a talk that you download. You're not actually communicating with someone. I mean, I'm, I'm with you on that. There's things that we still can't explain. Maybe we'll find out the answer one day, but I, I think the fun is trying to find out. I think there's parts we might never be able to figure out. Just our brains might not be able to wrap our minds around it. Just the way like we can't see certain colors on the spectrum, but we learn more every few years with science. And it's just remarkable. Like we look back 200 years ago and we feel like we know nothing. And in 200 years, we're going to look back and feel like we knew nothing now. Think of it like this. Let's see, you know, we're on a, a, a frequency. Our, our molecules, atoms, whatever, they, they vibrate at a certain frequency. And so what you're... What you see happens to be on a frequency that we can see. But is there a frequency above ours or below ours that we can't see? And it's another dimension other people are seeing. And what if somehow those frequencies kind of get close and we're actually seeing another dimension? We already know there's frequencies we can't hear or see that just nor I hate using the word normal, but you know, like creatures like dogs that are just part of our everyday world can hear and see. So to think that's all there is, is so limited. And some people scoff at this or dismiss this, but Stephen Hawking actually was talking about the possibility of seeing shadow people from other dimensions. And I mean, it, there's a lot more substance to these type of things, I think, than people necessarily realize. And it just, it makes so much sense. Why would there not be bunches of other frequencies and our human bodies only pick up on a small amount of them? And I'm sure it goes so much beyond infrared and ultraviolet and what dogs and cats and other species hear and see. So many people don't even think dogs or cats have emotions or if it's not like a human, it's like no other consciousness really has anything to it. And we're already learning through science that's completely not true for animals and 
other species, they just perceive things in ways we can't even begin to understand. So I just think we only see a tiny slice when we're here on the planet anyway. Yeah, I have a natural curiosity for those kind of things. My wife will tell you I have no curiosity because I, when somebody does something and it's, I, I'm supposed to get all the details from what they did and I don't. <laughs> then, then you're not curious. <laughs> then I'm not curious, but I mean, I mean, like history and, and science and all that, I'm, even though I'm not the smartest person in the world, I, I still have this curiosity for it. And I think that's part of why I wanted to be a, a paranormal investigator. And I, I stuck mostly to, to ghosts and things like that. But now, I, after talking to people that are into cryptids and UFOs and aliens, I'm starting to get a curiosity for that too because I'm kind of finding some of that a little bit more feasible as to where I, I didn't believe it before. Uh, same thing with, with psychics. I thought uh, that's just parlor tricks until I actually sat down with the psychic and she was telling me things that, uh, and I know this might sound cliche, she was telling me things there's no way she could have known. I'm curious details that just, I don't know how to explain it. So I'm going to make sure we talk about all of this stuff. And I agree is to think all this was nonsense, except beings on other planets. I just would look out in space as a little kid and see just endless. I knew there must be multiple solar systems. And how could there not be just creatures? I don't know whether human or not, but living on other planets. But I want to ask you about the psychic. There's so much. I'm going to keep you on for five hours and you're going to hate me. It's cool with me. I got the rest <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I don't, but maybe I'll make you come back on again. So you shared some of your experiences you had before becoming a paranormal investigator. Now, on any of the investigations, what would you say is the most, what I would call, what the fuck experience that you saw that you cannot come up with a normal explanation for? Well, I'm starting to become a believer in fairies. And you say, that's crazy, but I think I've captured them on camera twice. And... If you want to know the story behind that, I'd be glad to share that one. Yes, please. And why you would conclude it's a fairy. And what exactly do you mean by a fairy? Like a human-shaped body with wings that has the intelligence of a human? Yes. <laughs> so tell me why you don't think it's a dragonfly. Okay, well, I, uh, I, my, one of my first investigations was at a place in Spring, Texas. And this home had uh, been vacated. And so we got free reign, the whole house is completely empty. We did a sweep of the whole place. There's nothing in this house. I mean, nothing, not a, not a fly, not an ant, nothing's in here. And there was one point where I was upstairs by myself walking through this room. And on the video, you see something fly behind me and disappear. Okay. Most people would look at it and say, oh, that's just a moth. And then it flew out of the camera. Okay. I can probably agree with that, but one of the ladies there had taken out her cell phone and she was pointing it at the, the screen and she was videoing it so she could put it on her Facebook page. And we played it back and forth several times like, oh, what in the world is that? And I, I was the first one to say, that's just a bug. It's just a bug. But eventually somebody noticed there was a voice on there. And as it's flying behind me, the voice says, that was me. <laughs> it's pretty creepy. Well, I wouldn't say creepy. It didn't sound creepy. It just, it sounded like somebody was there just saying, hey, that was me. You know? But, well, as far as that story goes, I'll, I'll, I'm pretty much telling that one. But there's another one where I see it again. Now, why do you conclude it's a fairy? Because it could still be something completely remarkable. It could be a bug like a beautiful bug and they say that our discarnate consciousness after we pass away the consciousness can direct birds birds use their they have a navigation system that follows the magnetic waves and so maybe bugs not gross bugs again like a beautiful dragonfly why could a consciousness not be directing a beautiful bug like that or reflecting a light and then pressing on, you know, however they do it saying that was me, whether they press on the recordings, why would the conclusion be a fairy? The reason being is that I've had more than one psychic tell me 
that it's a fairy. Um, it, and I don't know if you'd say it's like your typical like Tinkerbell fairy, uh, but it's an elemental of some sort. And another video, I'm sitting on a bed trying to get some EVPs, and it looks exactly the same. It flies into the picture, but it flies through my body, literally through my chest and out of my back, or vice versa. I don't remember. But anyway, it flies through me. And unfortunately, we didn't have recording devices on those cameras, or you know, maybe we could have picked something up. But I, I sat there and I reversed it and I looked at it and every time you can see it fly in and out of me. And apparently, according to multiple psychics, that I have um, fairies that are kind of there to watch over me while I'm doing these investigations. And um, maybe part of my Celtic heritage, I, I don't know. I, I leave it up to people to look at it. Draw your own conclusion. I'm not going to say, oh, that is definitely what it is. Maybe somebody has a better explanation for it. Who knows? So wait, I want to hear about this fairy or whatever it was flying through you. You said you don't have a recording of it, but it kept repeatedly flying through you, right? No, what it is is on the video, I would I would reverse. Yeah, it's on video, but I don't have an audio recording of it. But a, the video recording, and I, like I say, I would play it back and then play it forth, play it back and forth, back and forth, and... I have no explanation for it. I don't know how a bug would fly through your body. What did that feel like? Did you feel anything? I That's it, just it. I didn't feel anything at that moment. And I don't know if I was meant to feel anything. But it may be possible that it's just there and it's just making sure I'm okay. You know, mediums say they feel all the energy. I wonder if someone who's a psychic medium would feel it. People more like us wouldn't. I'm, I, I'm curious as if I could have a psychic there with me when it happens again. Because I, I, I know it's going to happen again. So has it happened multiple times? I only had two on recording so far. Only? Which, you know, just catching it once, you'd say that's pretty cool. And maybe it's just a, an entity and it maybe looks like a, a fairy. I don't know. I think one thing where we get a little stuck, and I, I don't even think just people who study this, I think all of us humans across the board do this, is we overly try to label and define things. We'll call it a fairy. This especially comes up when we try to understand things that are inexplicable by our current understanding of science. We overly try to define things like, oh, a ghost, a fairy. And I think they're just things that we do not have definitions for. We've only see this minuscule slice and we try to define things through the knowledge we have of that when in reality it's probably something we just do not have the experience or the brain capacity or the understanding to define like trying to explain a color you've never seen imagine if you saw a color you've never seen before and you're sitting there trying to explain it you might be like well it was blue-ish, maybe a touch of purple, but not really. You can't explain it. Or if you try to explain to a blind person what's it's like to see, you have only the type of vocabulary of your experience. And I think that's where a lot of the way we draw conclusions, like fairy, ghost, what else can we do? We're people with the vocabulary we have and the knowledge. But I think that's unfortunately why either people dismiss this or people get hooked into in explaining things one way. Well, and I'm with you. I mean, there's things we just can't explain. And if, say, if you believe in God and you believe in angels, maybe it's a form of an angel. You know, it, there's descriptions of different types of angels in the Bible. They're not all the same. In the paranormal world, we're not even really scratching the surface. If you think about it, my friend Brandon and Mustafa, they have a, a camera that, you can see photons and they actually used it on uh, one of the episodes of ghost hunter and now i think they're going to be using it on their new show but you see things that you just don't on this camera you don't see with your own eyes and that you could see a guy walk across the room when they were using that camera i'd want to look into one of those cameras are they like a billion dollars though a camera that sees photons i feel like that'd be like something in a science lab yeah i could probably I could probably sell everything I own and still not be able to afford that thing. That's what I'm imagining. Yeah, it's also interesting. I like that you mentioned God and angels in this too, if that's what you believe. Because one interesting thing I've noticed too, 
this is just my personal thing. Again, I'm not anyway knocking religion, but as someone who's an atheist, when very early grief, when I would read NDEs of near death experiences about people talking about God and angels, I would make me think, oh God, this isn't true. And then I started to read and delve in a lot more. I'm like, it's just really, people are using the vocabulary of their culture and belief system. And so two different people, or let's take one, I'm just giving an example. Let's make up like a spiritual or like inexplicable experience. And depending on your belief system, you might talk about it completely different ways. Someone could be like, you know, I had this NDE and then God came and spoke to me and angels were hugging me and they told me I was going to be fine. It wasn't my time. And that God took me to see my mom who was in the waiting room with my aunt and they were saying he has to come back. And then they find out that's true. Then you could take a science minded person who would be like, I can't explain it. I felt these energy waves. Maybe they were coming from, I can't define where, and these energy waves rode through me and I had an understanding and somehow my consciousness that's not local was out of my body. And I used my whatever senses not attached to my body where I heard my mom and aunt say, you know, and that's the exact same story told from a different perspective. And I think that's something if you can kind of get past your belief system, you can hear a lot more stories or experiences without dismissing. Oh, yeah. Well, and don't get me wrong. Everybody has their own idea of who God is. And I, I don't knock anybody for what they believe whatsoever. I have an opinion and a different perception of what I'm believing God to be. And that's only through my own spiritual journey that uh, I believe that there is a universal consciousness. It may be the universe itself. I, I don't know, but I'm going to try to explain this the best way I can. Because this universal consciousness, you've got, say, it's 1890, just to pull that out of the air, okay? So you got one guy on one side of the world and a guy on the other side of the world have no connection, never met, probably will never meet. They come up with an invention, you know, let's just say the, the telephone or whatever, the telegraph, something like that. But they both have the same idea. That might look a little different, but pretty similar. How is it they come up with it at the same time? And that's happened time after time after time. So I think it comes from somewhere. That happens so much. And there's theories. There's, I guess, Rupert Sheldrake talks a bit about Morphic resonance, collective unconscious, and biocentrism by Robert Lanza, one of the first scientists who ever, I believe he was involved in the cloning of sheep, uh, the first sheep to be cloned. I mean, he's a brilliant scientist, has won prizes, and he talks about biocentrism, which is a universal consciousness that created the universe and creates matter. And some people might call that God. They might call it God in a totally different way. We don't really know. It's just about, I think, just having curiosity and really respecting that people come from different viewpoints and everyone, almost everyone, <laughs> has something interesting to say. I mean, maybe that central consciousness or universal consciousness is where atoms actually come from. And I mean, don't they all have some kind of code in them where naturally know certain things because it's encoded in these atoms or molecules. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know the technical terms here, but you know, maybe that's why God is omnipotent and he's here and he's there. He's everywhere. I mean, it's just thought that's something that I've sat and thought about. And that's about being curious. And yeah, I guess there is also something again, that goes back to Robert Sheldrake, but I think there's been other studies too, where, I believe they did an experiment where they taught mice techniques and they had them learn th and they really took some time for the mice to learn. And then their offspring and future offspring easily, it, it was a maze. They taught mice this maze. It was a complex maze. The maze took time, learn the mice took time learning the maze and then their offspring or great offspring, just each one got better and better. And the maze became instinctual to them and they just knew how to do it as time went on just instinctively not being taught by their parents. And that 
definitely says something about our knowledge becoming encoded. No one can understand that, really. Not the best scientist ever. At this point, doesn't mean we won't have a better understanding, but how much of that is just physical? How much of that runs deeper? How much of that is encoded in someone might call God, someone might call like a cloud. I know it's something also I've mentioned on this podcast before, Super Psy, which is like a universal cloud and they wonder if mediums are downloading from that. Maybe it'll come and turn out to be something we can't even imagine. Well, I mean, I, I want to believe that there's something out there. Otherwise, why are we here? What is the purpose of all this? And this universal consciousness, it, it, it puts out all this information, stuff you already know when you're, when you're born. And, I mean, you could be out on your own and in this world but you still know and like uh, the 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 commandments you know do unto others and don't kill and all these different things are they're there and they're instilled in us but somehow it says okay well i'm going to give you free will to decide whether you want to do this or not i mean there's so many questions there i mean we could get into this conversation and stay on it for days you know what i mean and then that gets into philosophy too which i could spend forever talking about i actually want to go back to your ghost hunting paranormal investigations all right is there anything you at first thought was paranormal or inexplicable and you discovered a normal explanation for it oh that's what i go into an investigation looking for a rational explanation for what's going on we went to a house in my old hometown of baytown texas these these people were they said they were experiencing apparitions and stuff supposedly being moved around, whatever. You know, a lot of investigators go in automatically thinking, okay, there's a ghost. We're trying to find it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what could be causing this. So we have a uh, an EMF detector, which is electromagnetic field. And I'm, I'm going through the house trying to figure out if there's any high readings. Went up into this attic. And for some of you younger listeners, um, Back <laughs> years ago, before I was born, they would run wiring through a house and they'd have this cloth, almost almost looks like a string or a shoestring that would go around the wiring. And that in itself is not a smart thing to do, but that's what they came up with back then. <laughs> and these, these people had cut pieces out of it to expose the wire and they wrapped wires around it and had attached to a, a light fixture and when you turned on the light the light would go <laughs> would come on well sure enough i mean that's going to sh- make the readings on your device just go nuts and that's that's not good some people are very sensitive to emfs and you can have hallucinations and other things from it can you just define an EMF for our listeners? What's an electromagnetic field? Oh, it's field. I thought it was frequency. Okay. Well, electromagnet. I guess you could say frequency, but I mean it's a it's a it's a field. It's a field of energy. And on top of that, literally over their backyard was a, a transformer. So it's literally over their backyard. I could stand underneath it when you walk in the backyard. So you're getting lots of of this energy all throughout the house. I have a feeling they were sensitive to it. Some people even get headaches and nausea and other things from it. Me, myself, it doesn't affect me. And uh, that's where I believe it was coming from. So, uh, I mean, we've gone into other places where... Like a, I can't say where because I'm sworn to secrecy. Secrecy, but it's I will say it's a, a a fire station, and they had it investigated a bunch of times. They said that they would hear chairs rolling across the the uh, the upstairs. And these are firefighters who called you in. They are firefighters. Mm-hmm. And they're reliable i think everyone would consider firefighters overall yeah. reliable grounded logical not 
quote unquote woo people. Yeah, you would you wouldn't want a nutcase out trying to fight a fire in your house for sure. And then they said that they would hear voices upstairs and uh, you know things like that. And so I'm excited. I'm thinking, wow, we're really going to get some paranormal activity. Well, at a certain time at night, there was a uh, an old fax machine upstairs. And it would reset itself at a certain time. And you would hear what sounds like rollers in the machine when it would reset itself. And I'm like, um, that's where you're getting that from. <laughs> and they were like, well, what about the voices? And it would always be around 2, 2.30 in the morning. Well, there's a bar literally across the street. And it lets out at about 2 o'clock in the morning. So you got people out there that are uh, inebriated. <laughs> And they're a little loud. <laughs> and I believe that's where they were getting the voices from. Other little noises, I mean, when the air conditioning kicked on, they had, you know, they have those false ceilings. They lift and they make noises and, you know, different stuff like that. So when you have overzealous uh, investigators that are willing to say, oh, this is a ghost before they really do some intensive investigating, uh, then you tend to believe, oh yeah, we got a ghost. But I, I hated to deflate their their story, but <laughs> that's what it was. Are people usually a little disappointed when you find a normal explanation? Or are they relieved? Well, it's it's kind of mixed. I mean, some people are really wanting to know that it's just something natural that's happening, so they're less afraid. And then there's those who are like, oh man, we've had a good ghost story for all these years, and now. Now it's not true, but you know, every once in a while you get that investigation that you just have stuff happen. You can't explain. And I don't put a whole lot of evidence up on our social media simply because I don't feel that it's really paranormal. But when I do put any evidence up, I always encourage people to say, Hey, can you explain what this might be? Maybe they haven't an idea that I didn't come up with and I can explain it away. Um, not too many have come back and told me that it, that they knew what it was. So, And what percent of times in general, obviously not exact, what percent does it turn out to just be a normal explanation versus something that you conclude is most likely paranormal or you just can't explain? No, just a wild guess. I'd say anywhere between 90 and 95% of it's just something natural. That must be so exciting when you get something and you're like, I just can't explain this. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> we That same house that we did in spring, I left a, my digital recorder going in the room. And I slept in the same room with a, a, a friend of mine. And all the girls, they stayed down the hallway. And we, neither one of us could hear each other, but, and mind you, I didn't sleep. I can't sleep in other people's houses for some reason, but I got on the recorder what sounded like a lady having sex. <laughs> I'm serious. One lady or like, where is she with a partner, like a man or woman? You couldn't tell if she was with someone, but I mean, it was, it sounded like they were right there in front of the recorder the whole time like they had put it up to their mouth and just you know those noises that a woman makes when she's having a good time <laughs> right. well that's funny and do you think there's any chance someone was pranking you guys because that would be kind of a funny prank or is there no way that could have happened i mean i wouldn't know how they could have done it because like i said i was up all night and uh, nobody came into the room and my buddy wasn't talking in the sleep, and if he did, he his voice had to gone up a few octaves. <laughs> and you probably would have heard. You you think you would have heard something as loud as it was, but it only showed up on the recorder. That was gonna be my question. You didn't hear it happening live. You just heard it later. Nope. Most everything that I catch EVP wise is always the EVP. I never hear it w when I'm there. So. I have no I have no idea of explaining how it got there. 
So I also have a question I want to back up. You said you had, you used to think psychic and mediumship was all nonsense. And then you had a reading. What was a few examples that she said or he said that made you change your mind? Well, we had, uh, we had an appointment to go see a psychic and it was for my wife. It wasn't for me. And I was just, I was just there for support. And we, we got there. And as soon as we sat down, she looked at me and she said, you just lost somebody, didn't you? And she says, I mean, like really, really recent. And I was a little set back because my grandfather had literally just passed away that morning. And she said, I can't tell the name, but his name starts with a B. My grandpa's name was Byron. And there's, I don't know how she would have known that that had happened because I mean, it literally just happened. We hadn't even told anybody yet. I mean, other than the family that was there, nobody else knew yet. And uh, she started to get into her reading with my wife and she started chuckling a little bit. And she goes, why do I keep hearing the water boy? And my wife and I just looked at each other and busted out laughing because the running joke between my wife and, and her kids is every time we're out driving around, we're always quoting from the water boy. It's like our favorite family movie. <laughs> I mean, how do you explain it? I mean, how would she know this? Nobody knows that. I mean, everybody knows it now because I just said it, but nobody knew that. Just little, little, they're not little things. They're actually big things, you know? How would she know? And then we we got to be friends with her, and eventually we asked her to join our, our paranormal team. And we took her on an investigation, and the lady that owned the house, um, she pulled her off the side, and she says, look, I'm, I'm getting some entities here, and one of them is like a child. And this, this child passed away. The mother um, was pretty much kind of exiled from the family, and nobody wanted to have anything to do with her. Um, seems like she kind of led a wild life and she had this kid out of wedlock and the family didn't approve and the kid got sick and passed away. And the lady looks at me and looks at her and says, no, nothing like that in our family. So, you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh, maybe I was duped the first time, you know, maybe, she, maybe she could read my mind or something. I don't know. But a couple of days later, the lady calls me up and she goes, you're not going to believe this, but I just talked to my mother and she had an, a sister that would go out partying, drinking and all that stuff. And she got pregnant and apparently, I guess, neglected the kid and the kid passed away. How do you explain that? How would she know that? I mean, the lady herself didn't even know that. Wow. And that's such a sad story. And that's such a unique story. That's not a lucky guess at all. I mean, some psychics, like the ones you see that have the big storefronts, like at the carnivals or, you know, just the, those ones that advertise on billboards and all this other stuff, they have a way of prodding information from you or they can look at you and they can tell by certain quirks if they're getting close you know, they'll kind of come up with some names or, you know, letters or whatever. And if you kind of have a reaction to it, they're like, yeah, yeah, that's definitely it. But something like cold this, reading. Yeah. How, how in the world would you guess that? No, you absolutely can't. And then also that this woman said it's not true. At first, A, she's not reading her mind. She didn't sneak in, you know, read her journal or whatever, spy a few days before and overhear family conversations. She was doing stuff like that time and time again. And I started to become a believer after that. And when she tells me something and I, I tend to, to listen, I mean, she knew my wife was going to end up with a white cat with one blue eye and one green eye. And well, she's in there. Her name's Kara. <laughs> Okay, tell that story. I remember you telling that to me before on your show. Well, she, part of the reading that she did for my wife, she says, I keep seeing a picture of a white cat with a blue eye and a green eye. 
and she says you you will have that cat one day and you know my my wife was like yeah i dream about that all the time i've always wanted one and i mean that was another thing how would this lady know but she knew and anyway it was i don't know a year or two later we uh we had went to a nail salon i believe it was and my wife was you know getting all purdied up and whatnot and you know I, being a guy i don't want to sit in there <laughs> there was a, a pet store right next door and I, I walked in and there there was a cat in the window and i wanted to, to look at it because it was a white cat and they had a special going on that day i mean i got the cat i got the, the carrier cat had all its shots was fixed the whole nine yards got it for 25 bucks and one blue eye and one green eye and i'm like oh, well, i have to have this cat you know so uh, I, I, I bought it without telling my wife and I walked in and said, hey, I kind of did something. And she looked and she, you know, fell in love with her right away. And uh, that, that's how we got Kara. That was meant to be your cat. So I don't think I've ever seen a white cat with one blue eye and one green. What, blue and green. Was that it or blue and brown? Blue, blue and green. Blue and green. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely her cat because that cat follows her all over the place. Oh, so cute. Also, you mentioned you're really interested now in UFOs and life on other planets. Do you read Leslie Kane? She is a New York Times journalist, and she wrote, first of all, a best-selling book on UFOs and life on other planets. She's also the one, she wrote the book Surviving Death that the Netflix series is based on, and she's just a very grounded, logical person, and she does a lot of investigation and research into ufo reports and she wrote a great book on that so i know you'll love her but and so now tell me your interest in is it ufos life on other planets well I've, I've always kind of had that curiosity if there is life out there but you know being a paranormal show i didn't want to just stick to ghosts it's, i mean there's so much to the paranormal world and i started it, reaching out to different people in in the, the ufo world one of them was uh jan harzen who he is the director for mufon the mutual ufo network i had several several people from ancient aliens on the show uh, carolyn corey the, the one um, gosh i'm trying to remember all the names and they, they're not coming to me but uh, one of them also was the lady that owned the crystal skull. I mean, not the crystal skull, the uh, the uh, star child skull. And uh, by the way, that's fake. So sorry to dash anybody's uh, hopes. <laughs> Wait, what is the star child skull? I've never heard of this. So, and then how did you find out it was fake? Uh, because the lady that owned it, she had it studied and found out that it was fake. But uh, so she's not trying to trick people she's an honest person and yeah she she's an honest lady so uh, but she's she's like the uh director of the uh, texas chapter of mufon anyway uh what is mufon and what is the is it you said starseed skull or star child skull i don't the think... star child okay i don't know what either of this is so let's say uh, mufon is is the mutual ufo network uh, mufon is like the most popular group that studies ufos in in the world anyway the for most people that are really into ufos know what it is but they found this skull and it's it's an elongated skull and it it just has a weird look about it but it, it was a i i believe uh, you know how in, I think it's, I'm, I'm sorry if I get this wrong, but I think it's in Africa where they put those rings around people's necks and heads and stuff like that to, to reshape them. Yes. Well, I believe that's what they had done. And I, but I think this kid was born with some kind of a deformity or something where the, uh, the, the cracks that are in your skull or the natural seams that are in your skull somehow it, it 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 grew different than what most people's grow 
I may be getting this wrong, but uh, if my memory serves me, that's what it is. But anyway, um, she ended up obtaining it, and she had tests and everything done on it and found out that it's, it is a human skull. But the story sounds good. <laughs> but shows her credibility, too, to have it tested and be honest, because someone could find that and either lie and say they know it is, want attention or money, or someone could not investigate properly and genuinely believe and not question and not check. So I think that speaks well of her. You know, talking to all these people just in the stories that I heard were uh, just gave me a more of a curiosity for it. And I'm, I'm starting to kind of lean more towards maybe there is something out there, but I mean, the government came out and said that there's UFOs. So, and that was the, a lot of the Leslie Kane investigation and UFO just only means unidentified flying objects. So who knows? I mean, maybe it is something from other planets, maybe not. We just don't know, but how can there not be life on other planets? How can there not there? What forms there are? We don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. They find like, a bacteria, but there's no way there aren't other Goldilocks Earth style planets. They're finding tons of them. There's no way that some of them don't have intelligent, human level intelligent, or not even more intelligent, very likely more intelligent forms of life. And regarding UFOs or spaceships coming here, why not? People always say, too, oh, you know, you have to be brilliant to be able to fly to another planet and no species could be that brilliant or their bodies couldn't sustain that. How do we know? Maybe you don't have to be any more brilliant than us. You'd have to say, oh, someone would have to be the best swimmer ever. It's not possible to stay under the ocean for a full day, but then you have fish. We don't know what their bodies are acclimated to. We exactly. don't know what their lifespans are. So maybe like a thousand year spaceship travel is the equivalent of like a month to us or even a year. People are thinking of moving to Mars and I guess it takes about a year to fly there. Maybe I'll have to double check how long, but we don't know what their bodies are acclimated to. We don't know what their lifespans are and how they experience time. So we just don't know. They may have figured out other ways to travel that we don't know. That too. Wormholes, right? Exactly. Uh, you know, maybe they know how to maneuver through wormholes and things like that. I mean, we, we'd have to be arrogant to think that we're the only intelligent life out there. And, I mean, relatively speaking, we're fairly young. True. And who knows? I feel like we're doing so much destruction of the planet, and maybe we evolve and destroy it. And it's this grim slash not theory. I mean, maybe that's kind of a lot of us just keep destroying and then re-evolving, and eventually you get a species and maybe to a level of intelligence that you aren't so self-destructive and that species evolves and evolves and evolves past where maybe us humans will be able to, depending how things go over the next couple hundred years. And you develop a species that's able to, you eliminate a certain level of self-destruction, you develop a species and evolve to a species that can space travel. Think of it like this. When computers were first invented, they were huge. And who would have ever dreamed that we have them in our hands now? Yeah, wasn't there one that was, it was like the size of a full room? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, cell phones and all these other, people would have never dreamed that was possible. But they're here. Yeah, you'd see likenesses to them in sci-fi movies that were considered complete sci-fi. And it's still not even to the level we have. But, you know, you take someone from, not even that long ago, like the 1960s or 70s, someone who was an adult then, and you showed them today, let's say it was presented to them that it was just a movie and a fiction movie about today. But if it was actually accurate, they would say, oh, we can't really do that about multiple things. I bet cell phones would be something that would just seem kind of like sci-fi and Maybe teleportation is part of what they're doing. We haven't been able to teleport anything big, but scientists are working on teleporting, I believe it was a proton, and they're able to teleport a proton or an atom or neutron, I forget, but they were able to teleport a tiny particle. Granted, you or I can't teleport tomorrow or anything, but that's just step one to maybe a thousand year ability to teleport. Scientifically, why, if you can teleport 
one atom, why can you not teleport big objects? Well, there's particles that move so fast that they actually go back in time. So Right. What are those called? Are those quarks? Am I right? Or do you know? I think they're called tachyons. Tachyons. And particles communicate faster than the speed of light, you know, in physics, with the spin of one particle light years away will affect the spin of another. They notice when they entangle. I mean, just crazy things. Possibilities are endless. We are wrapping up on an hour. I'm not going to keep you 10 hours, even though I wish I would get into major philosophical discussions that maybe like might lose some listeners on. But I have one question. What is your final conclusion now about survival of consciousness, afterlife, psi abilities? Do you think all of it's real? And if so, why would you say you finally come to conclude that? Well, a lot of the things that I have found in my investigations have led me to believe a lot of things that I didn't believe before. Uh, so it makes me think that there's more possibilities out there with uh, like with psychic abilities, things like that. They actually took a camera that can uh, can get a, a, a picture of the of your aura around you. And while this guy, he was a psychic, he was sitting in this chair and there's another guy next to him and you could actually see in the camera his aura combining with the other guy's aura. And so that's probably where that communication is coming from. So I, I can't explain why it wouldn't. I mean, the, like I said, with the things that I experience with with the psychic it's made me believe yeah this is very much possible um i've actually got photos of, of ghosts and it's very very distinguishable you can't refute what you're seeing it's not just oh i can see this you know there's there's an a, a, a thing about our brains that you can find faces and just so many things you know these are whole bodies they're not just faces so afterlife yeah i believe there is there is something to the afterlife is it what we perceive it to be i don't know maybe it's in you go to another dimension i don't know the closest we can know for now is evidence of ndes near-death experiences but i guess is there anything else you want to add that i haven't asked you um, well, I'm, I'll be glad to come back and talk about other ghost stories if you'd like to have me back on. Oh, I would love that. Yes. I'm going to hold you to <laughs> Tell us about your show and where people can find you and follow you and listen. Well, if you get on YouTube, um, it is the broadcast, the vibes broadcast network. And uh, when you go to my channel, you'll see there's all kinds of different stuff on there. I wanted to make it a more than just one subject i know that's probably not feasible but you know we we do it um i, I just want people to have fun and I also want them to be informed if you're having troubles mentally physically i, I try to have guests on that can help with that uh, you know being someone that's suffered from depression for most of my life uh, i'm very sympathetic to that so i uh, I try to get as much help in that area as I can. Let's say we have the paranormal stuff on there. I actually, I actually do some other shows that have kind of been put on the, the back burner, but uh, we have one for uh, for like couples therapy kind of stuff. And uh, um, I have some other people that may come back to the to the network. They do sports and things like that. There's but there's there's a whole kinds of stuff you can find on there. Um, I mostly work on listen to the vibes, which is the one you were on. I, I like I said, I have guests on that just want to inspire and motivate people and help. I, I have a, a Google site. It's if I if I remember correctly, it's under the Vibes Broadcast Network. I'll put all the links in the show notes to all your stuff. Yeah, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the website, but you can find me on Instagram at Listen to the Vibes or Into the Pit. Into the Pit is uh, 
into underscore the underscore and then p period i period t period t period underscore yeah that's a mouthful uh, my facebook is uh kyle coyote yates or the vibes broadcast network or uh, my paranormal which is uh pit paranormal and uh, i think twitter is the vibes broadcast and uh, we have a TikTok, but I, I'll have to send you the link. I don't remember what that one's called. <laughs> okay, and I'll put all these links in the show notes to your Instagram and everything. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. To get more information on what the fuck just happened, go to WTFJustHappened.net. There you can order my book, What the Fuck Just Happened, A Sciency Skeptic Explores Grief, Healing, and evidence of an afterlife. And you can learn all about how I came to conclude that there most likely is an afterlife. You can also learn about the early stages of my grief and the amazing, fascinating people I met along the way. You can also read about how much I harassed them trying to get evidence, see if they were cheating, and see if they were sane. There, you can subscribe to our newsletter. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. It makes such a difference, especially for a new podcast like this one. And if any of you have had a crazy what the fuck yourself, have any questions, feedback, or just want to say hi, reach out on either Instagram at WTF underscore just underscore happened underscore or email me at hello at wtf just happened.net and remember you don't have to draw any final conclusions as you wonder what the fuck just happened